If I had to describe to someone what is jazz, I would probably do it in the, in the words that the great John Lewis once told me in, um, in a conversation I had with him. He said, first of all, jazz have to always have the suggestion of swing in it, the swing rhythm. It doesn't have to exactly be swing all the time, but it has to have the suggestion of swing. Um, number two, it has to have the element of syncopation in it, the element of surprise. And thirdly, it has to always possess the element of the blues inside of it. That's how I would describe it specifically to a musician. If I had to describe it to a lay person, I would probably say um, it has to always have in its ingredients the history of it inside of it. It's like looking at a picture of your grandfather and if you stay at, or your grandmother and you stay at the picture long enough, you will ultimately see yourself inside of that face. So whatever you do, you want to always be able to evoke the sound of the people who came before you. All the way back to the early history of jazz of Louis Armstrong, Sidney Bechet, Baby Dies, Johnny Dies, and all of our originators at the turn of the century, turn of the, um, the 1900s, I should say, and, in, and throughout the entire history of jazz, you should always be evoking those spirits inside of your sound. You don't have to sound like them because you never will, but you should be able to hear them inside of your message. As a musician, I think that jazz is one of the greatest examples of democracy because when we get on a bandstand to play and improvise, it requires that we not only access the things that we have in common, but it requires that we work out our differences and not differences in a negative sense of the word, but we have various people bringing different things to the table. But we have to figure out how to resolve what's taking place in the bandstand. For instance, if I play one thing and the drummer plays something else, that could be a call and response kind of dialogue. Or if he's playing something that I'm responding to, there's always a give and take. And that's what democracy is about. How do we learn to live together? Being on a bandstand, improvising in jazz, teaches us how to play together. And some of the greatest improvisers in the world had the greatest level of democracy taking place on their bandstands. Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Sonny Rollins, Louis Armstrong, Benny Goodman. There's a whole list of them that you can see examples of democracy taking place inside of their music. Being from New Orleans, sometimes it feels like I have an unfair advantage in the music because we play so many different things. We played parades with Doc Paulin's band and Danny Barker. We played in high school folk bands. We played, I studied classical music and played in orchestral situations. I obviously played in jazz situations or brass bands. So there was a lot of exposure to all different kinds of music and even um, New Orleans music as we call it, or traditional music as it's often referred to. Um, I didn't play a lot of that when I was younger, but when you're in a place and it's always there, you, you get to hear it no matter what. So as it was time for me to become more informed about it, I was able to access things that I heard instinctively or just being around the music, um, and then figure out what it was to allow me to be able to articulate my ideas inside of that style of music. So I, I do think it's somewhat of an unfair advantage. but. Everybody has their own unfair advantages. I want to be, you know, um, open about it. Someone from New York will say that. Someone from um, a Latin-influenced country might say that. We all have our unfair advantages. The question is, how do we determine using them at the time when it's appropriate for us to, to um, access whatever that advantage is? So New Orleans has been definitely one that's worked out for me. Hello, I'm Victor Goins, and I rock jazz.